Welcome back to Let's Launch. In this video, I'll combine my previous four videos, uh, which were on the SpaceX Starship. Of the many things, we'll talk about the evolution, or how it came to be, the design, and the prototypes which have had a fair share of explosions. Let's get started. The development of the craft has been slow and experimental, and mostly funded by the company itself. The experiments are done by the rocket prototypes. In certain cases, they have been well over pressured to try and make it explode. This would have been done in this case to make it to, to prove that they can go well over the required amount of pressure. They conduct static fires before a launch, mainly to make sure everything is working properly. After all the tests are successful, if they are, they will continue and maybe launch the vehicle. The prototypes that have launched go to a certain altitude and then attempt to land. The first craft ever made that used a Raptor engine was the Star Hopper. The craft had three legs, which could not be retracted, and it was considerably smaller than the real craft. In April 2019, they did two hops each on tether. Then later that year, around July, they did an untethered flight. The untethered flight went 25 meters or 80 feet. Then, in August the same year, it went 150 meters, 500 feet, six times the previous ones. One month later, the CEO presented plans for the booster, the in space refueling capacities, the landing procedure of the upper stage, heat shielding, potential of the places it could go, and a change in design. This is when they changed the body from carbon composites to stainless steel. Some reasons were the lower cost, the ease of ma manufacturing, and the higher melting point. The MK1 and 2 prototypes were said to have already been in production before the announcements and changes. MK1 was at Boca Chica, Texas, while MK2 was at Cocoa, Florida. None of, the, none of them flew as MK1 was destroyed in a pressure test while the MK2's facilities were being unconstructed. Afterwards, SpaceX started uh, attaching the prefix SN to the upper stage variants instead of MK. SN1, 2, 3, 4, and 4 never flew. SN5 had only one Raptor engine and went 150 meters or 500 feet high, and SN6 repeated the hop. Both craft landed successfully. In September 2020, they, the, they pressure tested SN7, which was made from a different grade of steel than the previous versions. That same month, they fired a, a vacuum Raptor engine for the full expected duration. SN8 was the first prototype to attempt a high altitude flight. In December 2020, the craft flew to an altitude of 12 and a half kilometers. Then, when it shut down its engines, they cut out one at a time to minimize shock. Then, it proceeded with its normal belly flop maneuver. When pulling out, a leak caused the craft to lose thrust, resulting in a crash to the ground. While doing this, they violated their launch license, resulting in a two month investigation by the FAA. In February 2021, SN9 launched to an altitude of 10 kilometers, a full 2.5 kilometers below SN8. It had a similar crash sequence to SN8, but unlike last time, this time it was within their bounds. Starship prototype SN10 launched pretty much the same as the previous ones. On the 3rd of March, it, but it actually landed. But after about 10 minutes of successfully landing, a methane leak caused it to explode. SN11 launched on the 30th of the same March, and during its ascent, you can see flames from its engine. They did not affect the ascent, but on descent, it caused a leak. It caused a prototype to explode. The prototypes SN12, 13, and SN14 were scrapped, leaving SN15 to fly. The craft launched successfully and then also landed successfully, marking the first Starship prototype to land successfully and not catch on fire. Starship, or rather a vehicle to transport humans, was first proposed by SpaceX CEO Elon Musk in November 2005, even before they had launched their Falcon 1. They ended up launching the Falcon 1 in 2006, and even then it was unsuccessful along with the next two flights. Musk referred to it as the BFR, and I'm assuming it means the Big Falcon rocket, but don't quote me as I have no reference. He said that he would be equipped with the Mer with a Merlin 2 rocket engine, a bigger and more powerful version of the Merlin engine. It was said to be able to launch 100 metric tons or, two th or 220,000 pounds to LEO. LEO is also known as low earth orbit, by the way. 
Unlike the current Starship, it would not be reusable. At an American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics conference in July the year 2010, one year after the fifth and final launch of the Falcon 1, SpaceX presented their idea of a launch vehicle and their Mars space type, a vehicle that changes the or, their orbit, such as from a low Earth orbit to which to one which intersects with, with the moon, such as the Apollo spacecraft did. The launch vehicles that they proposed w- from lowest to highest power were the Falcon X, the Falcon X Heavy, and the Falcon XX. The Falcon XX was proposed to have only one core, which harbored six of the Merlin II engines. That would give it a launch capacity of an entire 140 tons. I've just been saying numbers, but 140 tons is like 136 perseverance rovers. Now, it did still have to go to Mars, so it needed a rocket with lift capacity with more, a little more than 15 tons. But still, 140 tons is a lot. Anyways, the Falcon XX would be around as tall as the Saturn V. In public, they also talked about uh, MSC. MCT or Mars Colonial Transporter. It could carry 100 tons or 100 people. It would be powered by a methane fueled Raptor engines and not the kerosene powered Merlin tubes. Finally, on the 26th of November 2016, the Raptor engines fi- finally fired for their very first time. The next day at the International Aeronautical Congress, Musk stated that his company was developing a new craft. They called it the Interplanetary Transport System, or ITS for short. It would have two stages just like the Falcons, but one key difference was that it was reusable. It would also use the, it would also use methane engines like the MCT. This was the closest they had so far gotten to the modern Starship, as they had the reusability and the Raptor engines, but one key difference was that instead of using the stainless steel of the modern ship, they were using carbon fiber, just like the modern Electron rocket. It was said to have a, a very low launch price, even though it could launch 300 metric tons to orbit, or, 66, or 660,000 pounds to LEO. It would also have three variants, a cargo version for taking satellites and other cargo to orbit, a crew version to transport people, and a tanker version which transported fuel to get the other versions farther. The same time in the next year, the CEO announced the BFR. The BFR was a refined version of the ITS. It had a lower launch capacity of only 150 tons or 330,000 pounds. It was just basically a smaller version of the ITS. It also had more areas it could operate for. The next year, Dear Moon was announced by the Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maizawa. Sorry if I mispronounced the name. Dear Moon gave the necessary funding to get the project underway. On one of the BFRs, he and six to eight other artists would go around the moon. There, they would make art. The current version of the Starship was designed to be fully reusable. It is an orbital rocket with a goal to lower launch costs. The rocket contains a super heavy booster and a Starship upper stage. The craft uses two versions of the Raptor engine, normal and vacuum optimized. The two stages are made of the same material, SAE 304 stainless steel, which also happens to be the most common version of stainless steel. When the craft is fully assembled and fueled, it weighs 5 kilotons. The craft is 120 meters tall along with 9 meters in diameter. It is actually taller than the Saturn V. Super Heavy's max thrust is 72 mega newtons. By the way, 72 mega newtons is enough to hover more than 7.3 kilotons. Even with all the thrust at liftoff, its thrust to weight ratio is around 1 to 1.5. Because of its lift capacity of 100 tons to low Earth orbit, it is classified as a super heavy lift launch vehicle. The Starship is made from rolls of steel, which are cut and shaped to have the 9 meter diameter. The Starship uses rocket engines known as the Raptor engines. They are amazing methane-fueled rocket engines. They operate at a tremendous pressure of 300 bar, but in tests has even gone up to 330 bar. 300 bar is the same as 300 times the atmospheric pressure, since 1 bar is the same as the atmospheric pressure. 
Since they have to withstand tremendous pressure, they are made of a special alloy that SpaceX developed themselves. The cost for a single rocket engine is $230,000, but the thrust they produce is also a lot. In fact, it has reached up to 1.8 meganewtons for the Raptor 1 or 2.3 meganewtons for the Raptor 2. That totals to around 1 kilonewton per $100. That means per $100 of costs, it produces 1 kilonewton of thrust. The Raptor engines are said to run at an oxygen to methane ratio of 3.5 to 3.7 to 1. This results in a slightly fuel rich combustion, meaning there is still some energy left. The most likely reason for this to be done is to lower the temperature. If it was burned at the 2 to 1 ratio, which happens to be the most fuel efficient, the engine would most likely overheat, melt the tubing, burst the fuel pipes, and be an overall disaster, which would probably result in an explosion. The engine's exhaust contains water, carbon dioxide and monoxide, nitrogen oxides, methane, oxygen, and hydrogen. The engines are the only full-flow staged combustion engines that are currently being made. In the past, the Soviet Union and the US tried to make such engines. They succeeded, but they were never put in, on, in a rocket, unlike the Raptors, which have already been installed in multiple rockets, including several which have been flown. Of course, not to orbit, though. A full-flow staged combustion engine has two pre-burners for the two fuels, which are connected to their turbo pump counterparts. They are fed by two different fuels. One of them is fed with a touch of fuel and all the oxygen, while the other is fed by the opposite, all the fuel and a touch of oxygen. Of course, as I say all, I mean all but the touch which has gone to the other pre-burner. This spins turbines and pumps fuel in back into the pre-burners. The exhaust of the pre-burners is then fuel-rich or oxygen-rich, meaning it has all, and it has a lot of it. This then can be burned to the main combustion chamber for a thrust. For, the, for more information on stage cycles, I'll leave a link uh, um, a link to a video by the Everyday Astronaut. Super Heavy is the name of the first stage of the Starship stack. It is 70 meters tall, 9 meters wide, and it can hold up to a total of 33 sea level Raptor engines. As we said before, the booster provides 72 mega newtons of thrust. The tanks can hold up to a total of 3.6 kilotons of propellant, or 9.7 million pounds. Of that, 2.8 kilotons, or 6.2 million pounds, are liquid oxygen, while 0.8 kilotons, or 1.8 million pounds, is methane. It is said to have a total of 280 liters of hydraulic fluids for its systems. Of, a, of the total dry mass of 160 to 200 tons, 80 tons are for the tanks, while the engine mount is combined with the engines and is actually only 2 tons. The interstage, which connects the two stages together, is uh, 20 tons. Its three-ton grid fins are actually powered by electricity. The fins are aligned as you would expect. Instead of being 90 degrees apart, they are different amounts apart to give better control in certain axes. Another important function of these amazing fins is to land the booster. Why they have to land the booster is because the, because the booster doesn't have legs. So, instead of legs, the booster lands using Mechazilla. This is a structure which is a set of arms and the launch tower. Why it can, why it can use Mechazilla and not legs is because it doesn't have to land on different planets. Basically, when the rocket lands, the fins are aligned close to the arms. By the way, in this case, the fact that Super Heavy can hover really helps as they use that time while hovering to align them. Anyways, once the rocket cuts off, the arms will also go down with it, but that is also to absorb shock. The second stage is quite a bit different than the first stage. It is only 50 meters tall, 20 meters less than the booster, while still being 9 meters in diameter. The second stage will also be able to be used during longer stays in space. Its dry mass is also quite a bit lower than the booster's. The second stage has a dry mass of only 100 tons. Its payload volume is said to be 1,000 cubic meters or 35,000 cubic feet. That is so big that it makes a pressurized volume of the International Space Station look a little small. The ship has an internal volume of 80 cubic meters bigger than the ISS, even though the ISS took decades to make. 
it can hold a total of 1.2 kilotons or 2.6 million pounds of fuel. Of that, some of it is in the header tanks, and the rest is in the main tanks. It has two different tanks because when it loads and it does its crazy maneuver, which tilts the fuel. When the tanks are too low, the engine will also take in some air, and that won't give it enough fuel and everything, and it will also damage the engines. The craft also has a reaction control thrusters. The rocket has six engines, three for vacuum optimized, three for sea level. The flaps, do, uh, the flaps on the rocket do two things. One, they produce extra drag on the way down, and two, they help control the craft, just like the grid fins on the Falcon 9s and Super Heavy. It has a total of four flaps, two small ones at the top and two bigger ones at the bottom. The heat shield is kept is the heat shield is to keep the craft from melting during re-entry and is made of thousands and thousands of hexagonal tiles. The tiles are made of silica and are meant to make and require no maintenance. They are slightly spaced out because when the craft re-enters, it will get hot and, exp- and the tiles will expand. The steel body can bear a tiny bit of heat too before melting. That's it. Thanks for watching. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and if so, please consider subscribing. Some videos you may enjoy will be displayed on screen.